Rock News. You can't talk about the dynamic and unique cultures that make New York City our country's melting pot without mentioning Caribbean culture. Yeah, this month, New York State made it official, recognizing June as Caribbean American Heritage Month. In a special Fox 5 film celebrating Caribbean culture, our Kendall Green takes an in-depth look at the contributions that have been made by this vast and diverse community. of the Caribbean, a magical, mythical world of sunshine, white sandy beaches, and some of the best food and culture on the planet. If you've been there, chances are you'd wish you could stay there forever. For many of us, June represents summer vacation, but for Caribbean Americans, it's a month to honor heritage. I'm from the island of St. Lucia, the home of the Melissa is adorned with a crown of jewelry and feathers with vibrant colors as the host of Tropical Fest Carnival Festival in Brooklyn. Got the feathers going for my headpiece and of course some of the jewels on the face to celebrate Caribbean culture, our creativity, our diversity. A lot of carnivals were actually, you know, born of, you know, people just wanting to celebrate their heritage and their culture, particularly, you know, Afro-Caribbean people. So a lot of it came from, you know, people fighting against forces that were trying to keep them from celebrating their roots. Another symbol of the Afro-Caribbean culture, stilts. In the Caribbean, they, they call this, like, Moko Jomi. So, so they go out in, like, different carnival events and stuff and walk over the crowd and dance. It looks like fun and entertainment, but the standing on stilts actually represents roots. It has a purpose. It originated in Africa. They had people go up on tall, tall stilts to represent, like, like spirits protecting the community. A community of over 13 million Caribbean Americans in the U.S., according to the 2021 American Community Survey, with nearly 8% of them living right here in New York City. The country moved to celebrate Caribbean Heritage Month in June nationwide in 2006. It wasn't until this year the state of New York followed suit. This all started with Assemblymember Nick Perry from the 58th Assembly District, who is now the ambassador to, to Jamaica. In May, Assemblymember Jamie Williams and her colleagues went to Albany with the Consul General of Jamaica to sponsor the resolution recognizing Caribbean American Heritage Month statewide. I think you have people who have been waiting for people to animate their issues in the New York State Legislature, making sure our legislation is just, fair, equitable, and also recognizes their contributions not only to the Caribbean diaspora, but their contributions here in New York State. Paying respect to their Caribbean pioneers in politics. Had they not been a unit ST Clark, elected to the New York City Council, I don't think politics is on my mind. Dr. Clark, the first Caribbean-born woman from Jamaica to be elected to the City Council, was elected in 1991, years before the United States would recognize Caribbean Heritage Month. She paved a path her daughter, Congresswoman Yvette Clark, would follow contributing to a wave of Caribbean representation in government. It's similar to when Cory Booker became the first black mayor of New York, New Jersey, or Barack Obama became the first African-American president. It gave hope to those who would not have seen themselves represented, represented in the heights of government. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. And caring about the trajectory of the Caribbean community isn't just a job for politicians. We want to become the largest ecosystem that connects Caribbean business owners across um, North America. Dr. Nicole Grimes, originally from Trinidad, the founder of Caribbean's Network, works with nearly 100 Caribbean-owned businesses and aims to ensure they thrive here in New York. This is our home. We are large in charge here. Um, this is the city with the most amount of Caribbean nationals in all of the U.S. And I hope that my company aims to, to really help, could, to continue rather, to cultivate this community of Caribbean talent so that we could really continue to show like we are our major force in driving economic development and opportunity here in New York and beyond. We have so many cool differences um, across our cultures, like our history of language, you know, all the traditions, the things that we celebrate. While we're speaking of businesses as a celebration of culture, 
We have to talk about Caribbean food. I've never seen somebody enjoying food the way you guys are right now. What am I missing? You're missing all kind of flavors, you know, and it's like, it's a combination of flavors and the vernacular of it is like, it's every time you take a bite, it's a different flavor in your mouth. It's so intense. That intense flavor these customers are experiencing is a product of memories Nadege Florimon aimed to create with her restaurant, Bonan. It's a Creole word for plantain. I grew up eating what is known as free thai, which is a street food in Haiti. And that comfort food, that is the ultimate soul food in Haiti. So she wanted to create that feeling of comfort she had in her home, Haiti. Truly, food is the ultimate connector. Oftentimes, we talk about, like, the soundtrack to our lives, but then I realize food always sparked those memories and experiences that we've had. It's a clear connector to her heritage, her history. She extends to others. Caribbean history, Caribbean culture is world history, and I think having a designated month just really is another opportunity for people to understand how truly we do live in one world and we are more connected than we think. Oftentimes when I think about Haiti, I don't think people realize the person who incited the Haitian Revolution, the slave rebellion, was a slave from Jamaica. We don't realize that, you know, Haiti was one of the first countries to recognize Greece. We don't realize that Haiti, you know, provided Latin America with with arms because they were the only free black republic in their areas and supported Simon Bolivar in freeing his nation. And you probably didn't know one of the founding fathers of hip hop has ties to Caribbean culture as well. Hip hop started in the Bronx in 1973 at a back to school party thrown by Jamaican immigrants at 1520 Cedric Avenue. Ku Herc, founder father of hip hop. He's up. Jamaican. Make sure you know that. The father of hip-hop, DJ Cool Hurt, perfected his DJing technique he learned from his hometown of Kingston, Jamaica. I was DJing at the time. My sauce was the best. He brought vibes to his audience based on their reaction in real time, mixing through turntables, keeping that sweet spot of the song on repeat. After that, people kept asking us, when are you going to get the next party? The method of promoting the parties themselves, another product of Caribbean roots. So I got my idea about promoting the party um, with the index card, because that's what they did in Jamaica. 50 years after the birth of hip-hop culture, artists like Busta Rhymes, also of Caribbean descent, is driving the industry's legacy forward with grit, creativity, determination, and heritage. Now, don't get me wrong, everything that is... Bust the rhymes and bodies as far as going to get it and not taking no for an answer came from being a Caribbean, raised in a Jamaican home. And a proud moment from one Caribbean pioneer to another. Buster, I, I love that. I was I can't do do a lot. You looked at all the fender and people we are one. so much. Absolutely. Well, a grand jury declines to